What's good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the M1 Podcast. Uh, I know it's been a hot minute. I know it's been a while since uh, we're here, but the good thing is that we're here, and I have uh, a new player that came over to Costa Rica this year, Jason. Uh, Jason, how you doing? Doing well. Appreciate you having me on. I appreciate you taking the invite, uh, taking some time out of your day uh, to come talk to me, come talk to us uh, a little bit about yourself, your experience. Um, so yeah, man, let's get it started. Uh, I usually like to start by giving people about 30, 45 seconds to kind of introduce themselves. So yeah, just talk to us about you, where you're from, some experience, some background, uh, yeah, give us your insight. Okay. Well, my name is Jason. I'm 25 years old and Costa Rica was my second, uh, pro experience, if you will. Um, I'm originally from Alabama but I moved to Las Vegas and that's where I graduated high school. Um, after graduating from Las Vegas, I decided to go to the Air Force Academy uh, where they have a prep school. And I used that as an extra year to hone my skills and grow and develop as a player more before going into uh, play at a university. Um, I decided to go to Lee University, which is a Division II school in Tennessee, after I left the Air Force Academy. And that's where I spent the last five years playing um, before I had my first opportunity to go to Europe and play. So, All right, cool. And um, focusing on, on your, um, your roots, where you're from, um, I want to talk about the, the Air Force Academy, how, how – what made you go there instead of another prep school? Um, did you have any connects um, in the Air Force Academy? Uh, like what made you make the, the decision to go there specifically? Um, I really had no idea about anything outside of high school to start. So um, the Air Force Academy came to me as just a normal university would uh, okay. anybody else because they are a university as well. They're a division one yeah uh, team so when they come they recruit you for the academy but they put you in their prep school as a year to learn their offense and develop before coming and actually starting right. so i always knew that i wanted an extra year i wish i could have had another year before going to play uh college basketball just because i didn't start playing basketball until i was 14 so or 12 forgive me and so having that late start, I just knew that if I had another year to really develop, that I'd be a lot better of a player. Right. And while you were there, uh, did you go through, I don't know, like any sort of outside military training or something that relates to the Air Force Academy? Yeah. Yeah. So at the at the prep school, you have to go through six weeks of basic training. And so that just consists of basically no cell phone, no outside communication with anybody. It's right. you're there, you're being told what to do. You're going through like physical training. Like they're literally yelling at you all the time and having you do push ups and sit ups and running and all this crazy stuff just to like mentally exhaust you. Right. Hey, how many people did you see drop out? Um, during the basic training, I think, there was like five out of did my did my thing all right do? all right so and um i guess I, I would i would say i mean did you have a plan b if if the air force uh academy didn't work as a prep school like did you have any other options or did you like stuck with it because you want you really wanted to be there um no, so I I had been getting recruited by bigger schools like the University of Tennessee. I've been talking to one of their recruiters since my junior year of high school um, because I played against uh, a player in a Christmas tournament that they were recruiting, and it was a really good game between us two. And so the recruiter ended up giving me his card. So I was talking to University of Tennessee – Troy University out of Alabama, uh, Boise State, uh, uh, 
and there's like several other like Pepperdine and other West Coast schools after I got out to Vegas that had been recruiting me. But when I always wanted, I always knew that I wanted to come back south. So I listened to Tennessee recruiters advice and he told me that possibly going to a prep school would help benefit me. And right. that's what motivated me to want to go to prep school. Right. And so okay. I just used that and finished it out and left the day after our last game. <laughs> All right, cool. And um, I heard you said you started playing basketball at 12. Um, what other sports were you involved as a kid? So I played football from the time I was four until I was 14. And um, I basically gave it up due to uh, we had got a new football coach in high school and his offensive plays and everything didn't suit my position. I was a wide receiver and just with his offense, I knew I wouldn't get as much action. So uh, after consulting with my basketball coach at the time, he convinced me that it would, it might be best for my future to focus on one sport and just hone in and develop and grow in that. And it'll take me places. Right. Did you have league dreams for football? Yeah, absolutely. I, I knew from, a young age, I was sitting on the couch with my dad from the time I was four. We'd watch NFL games every weekend. And I just always said, I'm going to be there one day. That's going to be me. Y'all going to watch me on TV. So right. um, I had high expectations for football until high school. And I decided that if I was going to go basketball instead, then I was going to have to go pro in basketball. So, Right. Um, so, well, I've been to the U.S., but I've only been to the West Coast, uh, Cali and, and Vegas. Um, okay. Down south, is it – like, is, is football more popular down south than basketball? Um, I would say so, just because you have teams like the University of Alabama. Right. Uh, you have uh, Clemson and Florida and all these big powerhouse schools in the south and – I know just growing up, football is the main sport in the South. So um, I don't, I really can't tell you from experience being out West because I didn't grow up as a kid there. Mm -hmm. but, um, in the South, it's definitely really big. All right. And jumping up to your college experience, uh, you get recruited, you get there. Um, what was your first experience like? Like, was it anything how you visualize it? Was it different? Or was it tougher? Uh, just, you know, going up another level, going up against maybe, you know, bigger players, better players. How was it for you? Right. Um, for me, I had super high expectations. I was like, especially going into a Division two school, mm -hmm. I was like, I always thought that I'm going to go Division one, and I'm going to be big time and all this stuff. So for me to accept an offer to go to Division two, my thought process was, okay, they got to be worse than division one. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to be like extra special. Like I'm going to stand out and uh, like, it's going to be like my game. Right. But I was very wrong. I got there and players were like just as good as you'd find in division one. And during my first year is when I realized that, you know, division one, division two, the main difference is, like the amount of money that the school gets and the amount of people that attend the school. Mm -hmm. Like it really has nothing to do with sports for the most part. And so it comes down to athletic players are in division one, athletic players are in division two, athletic players are in division three. Right. Um, it just comes down to, you know, the connections that they had in high school to help them get to the next level. You know, some people had, the hype behind right like hoop mixtapes and all this stuff where they're popularized and everything and other people might not have gotten the same media attention that somebody else did and they could be better but they just never had the same opportunities right and when you got there did you get um early playing time or did you have to earn it um yeah i got early playing time i basically split my freshman year with another guy. So I came off the bench, but we were both playing like 20 minutes a game. So I think I averaged 
17, 17 or 18 minutes a game my freshman year. Um, but I had high expectations for my years after that. And it just kind of went downhill after my freshman year, basketball wise. So, why? Um, I guess personally, I feel like um, something happened the summer between my freshman and sophomore year between me and the coach. Okay. And I feel like um, whatever whatever happened during that time, it affected every year after that because, you know, I was constantly in the gym. I was constantly working on getting better and doing things that could help me improve and get on the court and everything. And I was always a player that in practice, I was, I was going to go hard and I was going to do things the right way and um, everything. But I don't know, there was just this tension or something between me and the coach and he he stopped favoring me over other people, and my playing time started dropping. Right. Um, but right. Okay. And um, did I mean? Well, obviously it didn't affect, or it might have, but you still got opportunities to go overseas. Um, right. But you say it went down each. Your, your playing time went down each year. Um, but was there a specific year where maybe you considered transferring, um, doing something about it, changing schools? Yeah. So after my, after my freshman year, um, during my sophomore season, coach had told me, he was like, I just feel like you're not prioritizing basketball over everything else. And that's because, uh, I mean, I had a lot on my plate. I had a girlfriend at the time. I had a photography business. I also had to work in order to make money to do things, you know, because right. I was fine. I'm financially independent for my family since like the middle of my high school years. So like I've always had to work to have money to do things, pay rent and all this extra stuff. So, you know, I had all these different ways to make money. And, you know, it takes time away from things, but I never really felt like it took time away from basketball right? because I was still in the gym every morning shooting on my own. I was still at practice early. I was still practicing hard and doing everything that I felt like I needed to do to contribute to the team. And I know that I was doing more than a lot of players on the team. So there was just something more to it, and I never really got to figure it out. Okay. Okay. And um, you said how many years did you play? I played um, five. Five years, full five years. Okay. And how how much time did it did it went by between you finishing school and um, getting your first offer or your first job overseas? So I finished attending school in person my well obviously it was after I, I graduated and then had another year of eligibility so i started my my mba masters in business administration and i started that and played and then after that school year so that ended like may 4th of last year and then october i left to go to europe and play so June, July, August, September, October. Five months. All right. And did, did that team reach out to you personally, or did you have somebody, like, taking care of uh, the basketball side for you? Um, I went to – I got invited to go to a showcase in Houston, Texas. And through that showcase, um, I built, like, connections and stuff and uh, – the guy that ran the showcase ended up calling me a couple months later and was like, uh, this team needs a player that fits your description. And what do you think? And so I was like, I'm all for it. Any opportunity to get my foot in the door. And so within three days of him telling me that I was signed and on a plane to Europe. So it was a very, very fast and abrupt turnaround. 
All right. And well, we're going to get into this a little bit later, but were you always this type of player? Because when I, you know, you came here, you was athletic and you could shoot. So did you always have that shooting skill um, or did you develop it late in your career? So, like I said, I started playing at 12 and it wasn't until I was about 14, 15 that I really started actually shooting the ball. Right. And um so that really came from just living in the gym. I didn't have the best like home life. I lived with a single mom and three brothers. And so we we never really all got along. And so I was away from home as much as possible. And so I ended up kind of living in the gym per se. I had a bunch of stuff that I would just leave in the locker room. And I was in I was literally in the gym eight, nine, 10, 12 hours a day um, just hanging out between hanging out in there. I was, I'd go in and shoot. I was, I, I basically could live in there. There were showers, bathrooms. I just order a pizza. Right. Like, um, and that was between my, my freshman and sophomore year of high school. So um, that I, I would say that's when I saw the most progress in my overall game. Right. All right. So uh, getting over to Europe, you playing in Luxembourg. Uh, I'd assume, I mean, first of all, the weather is not what you were used to. I, no. I would say 100%, right? Uh, not at all. Rainy, <laughs> snowy, super cold. <laughs> yeah, it was not it. Super dark, super gloomy, I would say. Yeah, a lot. All right. And um, what was, first of all, what was the first, like, biggest wall you hit while in Europe? Not, 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 not talking basketball, but like right. more of a lifestyle, right? Like, like, like weather, uh, culture, uh, food, like what would you say it was? The food. Definitely food. the food. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a very picky eater. So my, my taste buds, my palate, whatever you want to call it is, is not up to par with a lot of people. So my main meals are chicken, steak, pizza, hamburgers, some type of meat, protein like that. And then like I'll have sides and stuff. But when I got there, my first meal was a Chinese or Japanese type restaurant. And it was nothing like Japanese or Chinese restaurants we have in the United States. The, the meat was not what I thought the meat was. And it just... It just didn't hit me. But so from the first meal that I had there, I get really threw everything off. And I ended up uh, just going to the store and buying a bunch of boxes of pizza. And so I had I had about two pizzas every single day for lunch and dinner. That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, I would I've I've talked to a few players and either even like players from Costa Rica we had a team that went over to China to play one year, like 2014. And there was one guy that said the exact same thing. Like I would just go save, you know, take the safe route. I would go get some McDonald's or some yeah. pizza. I'm not, I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to risk a the poisoning or, you know, just my stomach not feeling it. So I can understand the point. Yeah. What I did at first was, I was going to McDonald's a lot, but McDonald's in Europe is a lot better than McDonald's in the United States. Really? Yeah. And they even had like chicken wings and stuff there. And they were, they were pretty fire. But That's crazy. Um, after I started spending a bunch of money on that, I was like, I got to stop and do something different. And so I would go and I would get like ground beef from the grocery store. And I'd make tacos or I'd make hamburgers or something like that. And then I got tired of cooking. So I just started buying pizzas, like frozen pizzas, and just putting them in the freezer or the the oven. Yeah, yeah. I, I look. I get tired of cooking too. I live on my own, and yeah, I I think it's the worst part. You know, oh, yeah. maintaining yourself, cooking. I hate that. Yeah, I hate it. Um, did they give you your own place, or did you share a, a house with somebody? So we stayed in. It's kind of like like a dormitory type thing. It was okay. like there's a bunch of little apartment rooms inside of a three-story building. And we just shared like a bathroom and a shower room. Okay. And how many people would you say were in it at that time? Like the whole uh, team or? 
No, there was uh, it was basically me and the other American on my team, and then one random person on the top floor, and then there was the girls' team on the second floor, but it was only the import players. So there was three of them, okay, and then the coach, and I think there was like two other random people in there. So it was, okay, all right, and now um. Focusing on, on on basketball, uh, what was the main difference that you noticed? I mean, you're a pretty big guy. You're like what six eight, six yeah. nine. Yeah, yeah. Six, I mean, eight. you're you're pretty tall. You fit, you know, the standard for basketball. Um, like in terms of, for example, if if I was the one going over there, I'm six one. It would be a, a little bit harder for me, I'd say. So, what was like the biggest change in in how they play basketball over there uh, than what you were used to? I would say skill level um there compared to the united states is just on completely different levels uh in luxembourg uh the majority of the the local players there they didn't start playing basketball until they were 16 18 somewhere in there and so their skill level was a lot different because they don't they don't take the time to or they don't have the opportunity to get in the gym and train on their own and do all these extra things that we might have the opportunity to do so um i would i would just say having to deal with people on such a lower skill level mm -hmm. was the biggest obstacle that i faced being over there basketball wise all right what was your what were your numbers out there? Your um, I averaged twenty three points, uh, thirteen and a half rebounds, and two point something blocks a game. Okay, I mean those are great numbers. Um, was there is there one game or one moment that you remember vividly that you're like, man, like I can't I can't ever forget that. Um. Yeah, there was a game where I was just absolutely dominating in like around the basket. So it was just like a bunch of two-pointers. I think I might have hit one or two three-pointers in the whole game. But uh, but the game stayed neck and neck. The whole time. We were two points ahead, two points behind, three points ahead, two points behind. And I ended up with uh, 38 points in the game. And I think I missed three shots or I missed three threes and like maybe one, one or two layups, not layups, yeah. but like two pointers. Um, but I had the opportunity to tie the game to go to overtime, but I, it was a situation where my, my guard was attacking and he went up and I thought he was shooting a floater. But he was tossing me a lob, and there was, like, literally less than a second left. So once I realized that it was a lob and I went up to catch it, I kind of just had to toss it, and uh, and it didn't go in. So that was one of my misses. And uh, so we lost by two. And But it was a great game, and I, I played extremely yeah. hard, and I ended up going and throwing up for 35 minutes after it. So that's why I remember it so vividly. <laughs> All right. Um, did you uh, did y'all end up winning the their championship? No, 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 no. No, my team was uh, was not great at all. Okay, so you were in the, like in one of the bottom, yeah, bottom of the table teams. Okay. All right. And um, outside of, of of basketball, again, you mentioned earlier you had a, a photography business earlier. Did you take? I mean. Did you travel while you were there? Did you take you know advantage of of their scenery, their buildings, or everything? Because a lot of people, and some players have told me this, that a lot of players just you know they go out overseas and they stay in their room, they don't really do much. They take their you know PlayStation or whatever. Yeah. Um, so when when people come here, I like to encourage them, you know, go out, explore a little bit. We have great places. So I, I want to know if if you were able to do that over there uh, in Europe. In Europe, absolutely, I did. I'm I'm big and pictures and just saving memories and stuff because um i moved like 
three or four times from the time I was a kid till uh, I graduated high school. So I ended up losing or we lost all of uh, like like my childhood pictures and all this right. stuff. So I got to a point in high school where like I was always taking pictures. Like anytime I went out with friends, I was like, hey, let's take pictures. And it just became a thing of like just being able to have that memory um, is something that I got into. And I think that's what got me into photography. And but yeah, I definitely got to travel all over Western Europe and took lots of pictures and saw lots of things and uh, stuff. And I took advantage of Costa Rica a good bit too. So, yeah, you did. You did. You did. Um, did you go to other countries other than Luxembourg? Yeah. So I went to, I went to a couple of different parts of Germany. I went to Belgium nice. and I got to explore London, England for uh, a few days. So, Nice. And I've I've heard traveling within Europe is really cheap. Is that true? Extremely cheap. I flew round trip to London and back for thirty eight dollars. Wow. So that's nice. like that's like twenty uh twenty mil for yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean it. It does sound cheap. I mean, I've I've heard more about the train because there. I don't know if it goes through Luxembourg, but there's like a train that connects a lot of countries. Yeah. Um, or a, a subway or whatever. Um, and I've heard that taking that is really cheap. I haven't. I've never heard that the flights were that cheap over there in Europe. Yeah, flying's cheap too. You rarely find flights that cheap. That's just because it was a it was a very cheap airline okay. because it's an airline that they really tax on their like luggage and stuff, but I didn't have any luggage. I just packed a backpack full of clothes and used it as like a carry on. So my only fee was the $38 for the, the airfare. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of like spirit. I was saying in a sense, yeah. Um, yeah. flights it's are like cheap, spirit. but luggage is really expensive. Yeah, exactly. And, right. But I, yeah, I took a bunch of trains. I had to take a train, anytime that I wanted just to go into the city in Luxembourg, mm -hmm. just because it was like an hour and a half away. So it was, you'd take a bus to a train to another bus. And it was, it was just a lot of work to get to one place. Did you go out at night? Any clubs, any something? Did, did you get um, to experience that? Yeah, we went to, we went to a couple of clubs, um, like after games and stuff, but that's really not, that's not my vibe. Okay. So, you know, it was just, and eh, for me, I was just there. All right. And um, while you were there, did your team have the the gym available for you to work out? Uh, no. No it, was, no, it was the most depressing experience I've ever had in life. You know, I get there, <laughs> we have, we have one game a week, every okay. Saturday. And then, okay. We'd have three practices a week, but those practices are only an hour and a half each. So I have literally three other full days, and then I have the hours leading up until my practices, those three nights. So literally outside of that three and a half hours or almost four hours of practices a week, I have the whole rest of the week to – do whatever but there's nothing to do like i'm up in these mountains in this really small village like i wouldn't even call it a town it was literally a village not much to do if you wanted to go anywhere it would take you an hour and a half to get somewhere by bus and train and bus but if you if one bus was late then you were going to miss the train and so it was like it was just a struggle to get places so i really did stay in my room like a lot but I didn't have a PlayStation or Xbox or anything. So it was literally just me and my laptop and my phone. If I was on social media or I was watching Netflix right, or trying to FaceTime somebody or talk to somebody, it was the most depressing, lonely experience I've ever had. So I was happy when I got out. I mean, from those times, you know, people say you really get to know yourself a little more, right? When you're on your own, not really doing much. Right. Um, so I guess, you know, at least you got to travel. <laughs> I'd say that, yeah. you know, you, you got to know Europe. I mean, that that's cool. That's, that's dope. You know, traveling around Europe. Oh yeah. Um, 
so yeah, let, let's 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 move forward. You you finish your season there. You leave what the, the day after, two days after you're done. So, I actually got released on a, a mutual release. I had well, I'd fi- we had finished the regular season and we're about to go into the playoffs. For us, it was the play downs because we were second division in Luxembourg. Okay. So and we were at the bottom. So we were playing the top teams from the Division Three team, uh, just to see if we would stay in Division Two or drop down. Right. And so I told the, I told the owner of the team, or I didn't tell him. I asked him. I was like, "Is there any way that I can get 500 more euros a month just to help cover the cost of my food because I didn't like the food that they were providing and uh, just all this extra stuff?" And I was like. Uh, I'll literally work outside of basketball for it. Like I'm not asking you to just hand over money or anything, but um, I don't think he really took that the right way. He took it as I was being ungrateful for what I was getting and um, all this extra stuff. So he had like called my agent or my representative and um, they had talked and apparently they decided that it was just best for us to go our separate ways. Mm-hmm. and i was i was very happy with that i was great news i didn't know that they had talked about that because okay. the next practice the next practice i went to um the owner was there and he was like hey do you have a minute to talk and i was like yes sir what's up and he said that uh i'm sure your agents already told you blah blah blah, blah. and i was like whoa no i had absolutely no idea and he was like he's like oh well here's your release papers and I was like, well, sorry, it didn't work out the way uh, you wanted it to, but I'm out. So. <laughs> All right. Um, was there any language barrier when you got that? I mean, I'm, I'm, I suppose it was. Yeah. Uh, how, how bad was it? Um, it wasn't terrible just because most of the the people my age did speak some english because Mm -hmm. in europe they at least in this in luxembourg you start out learning uh german your first like two years of school and then you start learning french and then after that you're you start learning english so um the majority of young people there spoke english but being able to like communicate with people at a restaurant right that was that was a different story (laughs) We use like Google Translate or something. Um, yeah, if you were going to like a sit-in restaurant, but if you were going to like McDonald's or Burger King or whatever, you could just use the machine and got it. Uh, do it without interacting with anybody. Got it. Got it. Okay. So after you you get you get released, uh, you go back. You said it took like what like a week. Yeah. So and, and then you got here. Yeah. So I landed in the United States, coming back from Europe. On a Wednesday night, Thursday morning, I got a text message saying to go to another showcase with from my friend. He was like, I'm going to the showcase. You should come with me. And so I was like, sweet. And so that's Thursday. The next day is Friday. I wake right. up, I get a rental car, and I drive 12 hours to the showcase because it was cheaper to drive than it was to fly. Mm-hmm. And so I drove all the way there. We played, everything happened, went well. And afterwards, uh, it was it was for this Costa Rica uh, league. And mm-hmm. so afterwards, the guy was talking to me and my friend, and I was just asking him questions. He was like, by the way, the pay is only this much. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know if I can do that. And he was like, man, I absolutely – understand and like i'm not saying that you're worth this or you're worth that or whatever he's just right. like this is just what it is if you come through it this way and uh but he was like you gotta think about it it's more than just the pay it's like it's the experience of uh not only having another professional season under my belt and add it to my resume but being able to experience costa rica and just another culture and everything. And I was like, 
you know what, like I really don't have anything going on these next three months. So I'm all for it. And right. so I ended up saying, okay. And I was in, and then four days later, um, we were on a flight to Costa Rica. And, and you were the first pick, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was the first pick in the, did you know that you were the first pick? Did you talk to the team before you landed here or something to, to the coach or anything? No, I had, uh, I had no idea anything about the team or anything before I landed, but I found out the day before that I, the day before we left the U S like what team I was going to be on and, uh, that I was the number one pick. So, All right. All right. All right. And um, all right. So landing, landing here. Um, I mean, the airport is not so far from where you played. You played in Grecia. Uh, yeah. That's like maybe like an hour, I think. I don't know. Yeah, it's like 40 minutes. Yeah, like 40 minutes. Uh, first impressions of the city. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I like I'm from Limon. So I'm, I'm from the beach area. I'm from, right. you know, the hot and but i moved to san jose when i was a kid so I, i'm like used to the city so I, i i i can't really see myself just going like to a country kind of like city so how how was it for you uh going over there and staying over there um in grecia in grecia yeah um i mean it wasn't it wasn't a problem i was used to seeing similar houses in my part of europe so um And I kind of already knew what to expect because, like, I've you see movies and stuff. So I mean, right. it is just to me. If I was only to have ever seen the United States, I would just think that it looks like a semi-old, rundown, like town in the United States. Right. Uh, but you know, I had a nice little apartment above uh, the shopping center, so. Uh, it's not like I had great living conditions and uh, coach would bring us groceries and stuff. So I really had no complaints about where I was. Completely different than, than uh, you, uh, Luxembourg. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> and you guys had, I think it's the best gym in Costa Rica right now. Yeah. yeah. Brand new. Sure. They remodeled it like two years ago in, in COVID season. Yeah. The floor, the goals. Like everything about it, besides like the the fan seating and stuff, I would say the best floor gym in Costa Rica. Uh, that and, in. Yeah, and you guys had a pool next to it too. Yeah, so me and Jalen, uh, we'd go shoot every single morning, and then if we felt like it, we'd go swimming right after we just got done shooting. So it was a uh, it was definitely a blessing. Yeah, I, I I bet I bet it was. Was it easy access for you guys, or did you have to like ask for the gym or something like that? What we wanted to work out. Um, we never really asked. We just showed up. But I think okay. that's because like we'd go in the morning, and right. during the week everybody's in school, so mm -hmm. like, there's never anything going on in there. So, all right, all right. So let's talk about the season. Uh, who you guys open against? Do you remember? Uh, the team opened against Roswell, but we weren't there for that game because our flights got canceled due to weather in, uh, in Alabama. Okay. Okay. So your very first official game was against who? Uh, the Pelicans, I think. Against one of the, yeah, against the new teams. And did you have any expectations about the skill in Costa Rica? Like, did you, ha had you heard anything about it? Did you have anything set up for yourself? I just heard that it was more physical than I'm, I was probably used to. and But coming from Luxembourg, where the referees really didn't call anything, um, I felt like I'd be okay with coming in. But um, I was definitely surprised at how the refereeing was in Costa Rica. I think the first time I touched the ball, I caught it on the elbow and was – looking to pass or was about to pass and somebody just like grabs my arm and rips it. And I just look at the ref like, what? <laughs> um, but yeah, after that game, 
when I called my mom because my mom always asked me about my games. Uh, I told her, I said, that's the most physical game I've ever been a part of. <laughs> <laughs> bullying and bullying and bullying. But, so it was true what you heard. It was true. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've, I've heard that a lot from um, imports that come here. They always say, like, man, even if it's compared to the U.S. and compared to other leagues, um, like – For, well, with Justin, for example, he played for the Pelicans. He told me, you know, he played he played in Uruguay and other countries. He's like, this is the most physical. But I don't think people mean it like in a bad way. Um, like people mean it like, you know, like I feel like here local players, they actually want to win. Yeah. Um, and there's like some pride into it too because, you know, we're a small country. We know each other for the most part. Right. Um, so we try a little harder, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, So yeah, I, I don't think it's like meant to be said in, in in a bad way, but I've heard that a lot, a lot. Yeah, I just feel like, uh, I feel like that's what would make be, the refereeing is what makes it seem like it's a it's a better league than a lot of other small leagues in other countries like right. Luxembourg. Like the locals absolutely sucked in Luxembourg. Like the mm -hmm. skill level was extremely bad. Um, But here or there in Costa Rica, uh, you know, people, the locals are more skilled. But also when you add into the the refs not calling stuff, it makes the game or it makes everybody look better because like, I can reach in and maybe hit you a little and end up getting a steal. Right. But in reality, if you were in the United States, I mean, that's, that's a foul. And yeah. So it's just – it's like sneaky – Sneaky better skill, I guess. <laughs> All right, I'll take that. I'll take that. I, I, uh, I believe it. Um, how easy or how tough was generally with your teammates? With your new teammates? Oh, my teammates were super cool, super chill. Um, like three or four of them spoke really, really good English, and the rest knew some words, but never really. Never really did let them go. So, but I mean, I came in knowing like a lot of basic Spanish because I took two and a half years in high school. So, okay. Um, it's not like I came in and didn't know anything. So, there's times where they were talking to each other and I was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I was able to have some conversations in Spanish with them. And I think that really helped mend things early in. All right. All right. And um, who? I mean, th th this will put you on the spot a little bit. Who's your favorite? Uh, your favorite teammate outside of Jalen? Because awesome. we know Jalen is like your best friend. So, who's your favorite teammate? Um, outside of Jalen, I would have to say probably Guardy. Man, <laughs> no, I love Guardy. He's a character, <laughs> man. He is character. I mean, he is. He is. Uh, he played with us last year. Um, yeah, he is. Um. How was how was the like the whole practice schedule? People going because I, I I mean I know that since it's not fully pro here either. Um, I know a lot of people have to work outside of basketball. You know, schedules can conflict. Also with college, uh, some people may still go to college. Right. So how was that whole vibing with you know practices? Uh, the whole team was there. Did you guys you know prepare for every game properly, or was it a little bit rough on that end? Um. The way that I see preparing for a game is like scouting a team, knowing who does what, what the team does as a whole, yeah. going over that team's plays and preparing what you're going to do defensively and stuff. And I don't feel like we ever did anything like that. I feel like we always prepared for ourselves. Okay. It was we're going to go in and we're going to do these shooting drills and then we're going to go over our offense a little bit and then we're going to play each other. Okay. And, um I wish we would have done more like actually preparing for the other team. But I mean, there really is only so much you can do when you have players that are working all the time and all this other stuff. So uh, I think we practice for like an hour and a half to two hours twice a week. And, okay. you know, players, some players didn't get there on time. So we'd always start 15, 20 minutes later and stuff. But, It was just uh I mean it wasn't it wasn't terrible. I just yeah. felt like 
it was it was good for us as a team, but when it comes to like competitiveness and actually being able to beat teams because you prepared for them, I just don't feel like we had that connection. Okay, okay, okay. and um, what was what was uh, your, your guys' record? You remember? <laughs> you I were above know. us, right? Yeah, standings. We were fifth. I think you were what six or fourth? I think. No, we were six. You yeah, we were fifth. fifth. Yeah, we were six. Okay. All right. When when we traveled to Grecia, we got there. I think it was fifteen minutes before uh, tip off. Okay. I think we we played like what seven maybe. It was it was an early game. It was like seven p.m., seven fifteen, whatever. Our bus had left, and I remember because when we leave, when we travel, uh, I don't go to the bus directly. They pick me up at a certain spot. We pick like four of us at a certain spot, and they had said that the bus left like at two thirty, three p.m., and it still took us like three hours and a half to get there. Yeah. Um, and I remember that game. You had a, you had a great game. You had like what, like twenty eight points. No, I had a I had a great second half. Well, yeah. I mean, you had great stats. <laughs> you had great right. numbers. You had great numbers. But you ended up with like 28 points, like a double-double, you know, hella threes, like five threes or four threes, something like that. Yeah, I think I had a – I think I had a, I had a three to start the, the game in the first quarter. And then I think I had a dunk in the first quarter as well. And then I didn't score in the second. And then I came out in the second half after Coach chewed me out. Uh, about not not looking like I cared or wanted to be there or whatever, and I uh, came out and took a charge and ended up with 21 points in the second half. So it was uh, it ended up being a good game stat wise, but it was yeah. really just a great second half. Yeah, would you say that was your best game? Yeah. What was your best game? So we played Avogados. Um, uh, and I had 28 points in the first half and yeah. just going crazy, put back dunks, uh, cutting down the middle dunks. Um, uh, I think I had one, three, um, uh, and then just mid ranges, layups, fast breaks. It was just, everything was going in. Yeah. I, uh, it, it, it seems like. I mean, I've seen a lot of good games at that gym. I think that gym just has something, right? Because last year Tevis had 35 in that gym, so I think that gym just has has something. It helps, it helps, you know, away teams score. Yeah, I don't know. I ended up with 39, so that's crazy. I didn't have. I think I scored four points in the fourth quarter, though. So it's yeah. like they just they just kept doubling me and stuff. They were just trying to keep the ball in my hands. So I was really trying to use that fourth quarter. Try to get ten assists. So I have a triple double, but it didn't <laughs> did you guys win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, I, hey, that's cool. I mean, that that that's a good thing about this year. I mean, this year, I feel like there wasn't like the competition. It, it, even though we kind of knew who the favorites were, the competition was pretty even out, like across the league, uh, which is definitely different from what it used to be you know, years prior. Right. Years prior. Like once you faced like a team like Eskazu and you saw them against another team, you would automatically know it was going to be a blowout. Huh. So you know, seeing seeing you guys help out, I mean, you and Jalen, I mean, both of y'all had, I mean, especially against us, you and Jalen had good games. Yeah. Um, and then seeing you guys, you know, level out Grecia and helping out, you know, get some doves, that's definitely um, a plus to see. Would you come back to Grecia if they offered? Um. It depends on how much they offered. They, um, I can't mean that. I can't fault you for that. Yeah, but it would also depend on whether I'm playing somewhere else or not. Right. So, like if I was, if I wasn't playing anywhere, I would absolutely go back to Costa Rica. Right. Um, would I want to go back to Grecia? I wouldn't mind, but I would rather be somewhere, maybe in like San Jose or. Punta Arenas or maybe even Limon just right. to experience a different part of the country and be able to travel around that area. 
Okay. All right. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Um, traveling. So talk to me. I mean, I, I, I started following you. You were over the, all over the place. You went to waterfalls, beaches. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, did you go with somebody else? Did you go by yourselves by yourself on those trips? So I ended up making some friends with like local people in Grecia mm -hmm. or even there's a couple in San Ramon and uh, San Jose as well. Um, like I went to a waterfall with uh, not a waterfall. I went zip lining with um, Lucy and some like Roswell people, girls, the girls. And, yeah. Uh, and then I went to, I went to a volcano with Lucy and her cousin and then just with local people around Grecia, I ended up uh, going to like waterfalls with them and stuff. So it was, uh, it was just lots of traveling and stuff. Me and Jalen went down the day before we played the Pelicans and okay. just got to explore a little bit of Punta Arenas and sit on the beach and just chill. So All right. a lot of is there a favorite place? That you visit that you'd say you know you enjoyed more than other um no i don't think so i just think that i'm i'm just big on enjoying new places okay so like i'm i've always said since i was young like i'm one of the most unbiased people i know right like, i don't really ever favor something over something else more unless we're talking about food then it's like always pizza over everything. So I feel you. I feel you. Um, and how did you always take the bus to those places when, when you traveled? Um, I took the bus to one waterfall and I took the bus to Limon. But outside of that, it was just Ubers. You Ubered? Yeah, a lot. I didn't even know they had Uber in, in, in Grecia, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of them. Mm, that's interesting. I, I, I didn't know that. And how much was the average trip like to one of these places? Like six mil. Maybe. Damn. That's like $12. That's, yeah. not, that's not terrible. No, it, was, not terrible. it is way cheaper than the United States to Uber. Like I've I, heard that. I've, I have heard that. I had to take a a 15 minute Uber the other day and it was like $28. Wow. And, but a 15 minute Uber in Costa Rica is like $4. Like there's some, there's some real cheap Ubers. So definitely, know. definitely. Yeah. Um, and, um, you were selected to a lot of competitions in the all-star event that, that we guys had here. Right. Uh, I heard you talking. We was, we were out on, on, uh, I think it was the, the, the Lucy's house and you were talking about the dunks you were going to make, you know, three pointers, you were going to, you were going to win that too. Um, oh. I wasn't at the event. I had to attend the after party that, that we had, oh. but um, how was the event for you? Like did, did, was this your first all-star event that they had one in, in Europe too? Like how, How was it for you? Yeah, no, they didn't. They didn't have one in Luxembourg, so I had high expectations coming into this one. I knew it was going to be a lot of fun, um, but I don't know. We, I, when I got in there, we didn't have an opportunity to really shoot much or anything. Um, they did give us like two minutes before we got started for everybody to go shoot around and mm -hmm. stuff. But I didn't do that just because there was way too many people shooting. Um, so when I finally did get an opportunity to shoot, it was actually my turn in the competition and it was, uh, I was a little nervous because, you know, I hadn't got a feel for the ball or the rim and right. everything. So I think I started off, uh, like one of five on my first rack in the corner. But then after that, I got them going. Uh, I finished the first round and was the, top shooter and so went to the finals and uh ended up going off in that at the end i think i hit uh nine of my last 10 so ended up right. winning three-point competition that way so it was awesome 
right. Did you see any competition in the dunk contest? Or it, it was just you and that's it? No, there was definitely competition. Uh, Arba's guy, Ferguson, uh-huh. uh, he's super lanky. And so like he has the ability and opportunity to do some cooler dunks. But um, what helped me win that was – he tried to he tried to do an East Bay uh, earlier in the, like the f- second round, I think, and he couldn't get it. Uh, right. But he still ended up advancing to the finals with me, and I ended up missing my last dunk uh, in the last round. And so like he could have easily just went up and did a regular two hand dunk and probably won the competition. Um, but he tried to do the East Bay again. And it's because he did that that I was able to uh, advance and win, actually. So, hey, that's what's up. That's what's up. Um, th- what did you get like a trophy or something for it? Yeah, I got a trophy for both the three point and the dunk contest. Okay, and how was the game? The All Star game. Um, was it fun? No, nah, I didn't. I didn't care for it. Right. It was just. I'm such a competitor that like just seeing everybody really walking and just throwing up really bad shots and stuff. It was just kind of like, eh. <laughs> and I really didn't get the opportunity to play a lot. So yeah, I think it, I would might've enjoyed it more if I was in more, but um, also one half of the court was super slippery. So was it raining or something? No, I don't. I don't know. It I think it's a fog machine. Oh, okay. And they tried to they tried to sweep it before we got started and everything, but it just it didn't help. So, um, I just did. I just really didn't care for the All Star game as a whole. All right, all right, all right. So yeah, that that happened on a Friday. We, we ended up going out. Uh, I was able to arrange the after, uh, after party for Tevis' birthday, and all you guys were there. Uh, I mean, people may not know, but we went out to – there's an area in San Jose called the California. We got some some tables, some section, and all you guys got there like at 12, yeah, like 12.30 a.m. or something like that. Um, How was it for you? I mean, I know you said, you know, clubbing is not your thing. Um, You know, just going out in a different country at night, like how was it for you? I know the music's different, of course, a lot of Latin music. Um but- but you know, uh, how, how was the whole experience for you? Yeah, I thought it was – I thought the environment as a whole was super cool. You know, like I love being around a bunch of people. And, like, I'm cool with clubs and stuff. But, like, I'm just not the person that's, like, going to be out there dancing and right. uh, stuff. So I'm more of, like, a, a watcher. Like, I enjoy watching people and see how they interact and do things and um, whatever. But – but standing in the in the like VIP section area, it was it was cool at first because it's like, yeah, you know, we're exclusive from y'all. But at the same time, it was like, dang, I feel like everybody can just sit here and stare at me the whole time <laughs> because you are so exclusive and you're standing yeah. above everybody and stuff. So um, I ended up actually going down and just being around everybody, and then. Uh, found out there was another part of the whole club outside area. Yeah. And I really enjoyed being out there because so, it was super hot inside. That's true. That's true. That's that's that, that's the downside of that club, man. It's too damn hot. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was definitely a fun night. Did you leave out early? Yeah, I think I was out? only there. I think I might have only been there like an hour and fifteen hour okay. and a half. So. Okay. All right. Yeah, it was it was it was wild. I mean, if you ever talk to uh I think it was Cameron or Poncho, like if you ever see them again, they'll tell you it was it was crazy. The, those two those two took it to a whole different level, man. It was it was cool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was kind of like the preparation for the playoffs. Uh, you know, you had the playoffs were the next week, I think like on a Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that. Yeah. Uh you guys played uh Oh, Lamont Sharks. That's true. You had the back to back. Yeah. Um. First of all, I want to get something clear. How how did you guys arrange playing? 
at home first and then getting a back to back in the morning. So I, apparently the story is the year before uh when Grecio was supposed to play Lamon, okay. uh Lamon's coach had like a baby shower or something and they had to reschedule the game for a different day. And so to repay the favor, coach asked if we could play at home first. That way if it did require a game three, then we could just play back to back in Lamont. Okay. That way it would cut out the cost of having to drive to Lamont and back to Grecia, back to Lamont and back. That makes sense. All right. It makes sense. And um did you see any any difference in the playoff playoffs? I mean, was there were the refs, you know, not calling even what were they calling less? Was it more physical? Like, how did the Sharks come out, you know, to your game preparing? I know you guys won. I don't remember if it was by a lot or not. Um, but yeah, you, you, you just talk to me how the, how you guys prepared for the playoffs and how did you take that first um, series against them? Um, so the first game of the series, we we knew what to expect. I think that's the one the one practice that we had where we actually prepared for a team because. Okay. We had just played Lamon the week before, so uh, we knew what to expect. And, you know, I told Coach, I was like, let's watch film as a team. We need to talk about things. And so we did. We had uh, Coach Grilled Hamburgers at his place, and we watched the game. And I was able to pause it and talk to people and be like, look, I don't need to be guarding out here when the ball's here and all this stuff. And um, – then we went to practice after that and were able to kind of like walk through our offense and our defense and how we were going to rotate and stuff. And I think that's really what made the biggest difference in our, in our performance as a team. But that first game, I think I only played like 12 minutes, maybe not even 12 minutes. And it was just because coach didn't feel like I was doing what I needed to do. And mm-hmm. so he took me out and the the subs and second string were playing really good and kept us in the game the whole time. So he didn't feel the need to put me back in in the second half. And uh, we ended up stretching out the lead in the fourth quarter to like eight or so. And so he just left it how it was. And then the second game we played – at Lamon and it was crazy. Man, they <laughs> they had so many people there. But um but we ended up losing that game by five. Mm-hmm. And I will say that we lost that game because of the refs. Terrible. Really? Absolutely terrible. <laughs> Lamon shot 15 free throws in the fourth <laughs> quarter. <laughs> That's crazy. In 15, the fourth quarter. 15 is crazy. In the fourth quarter. Yeah. Yeah. They shot, that, that's, they shot 40 all game. That's it. That's crazy. And we lost by five. Yeah. That means they, they missed a lot too. Yes. That means they missed a lot. But free still, throws. it's the fact that like if a team's shooting 15 free throws in the fourth quarter, yeah. Their their last 10 points of the game were all free throws except for Tevis had a, a little mid-range jumper that put them ahead by two. Okay. So their last – eight of their last 10 points were free throws. And was it to anybody? Like, was anybody getting uh, calls? Or was it to a specific, you know, Tevis or uh, Pancho that were getting the calls? Uh, it was anybody and everybody. Anybody. <laughs> If you if you anybody that drove had a call. If you attacked the rim, they were giving you free throws. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, I think the, I thought it was a great game up until the fourth quarter, and yeah. I think that's when things got lopsided. And I, I it could have been because uh, the Lamone situation with the ref a couple weeks before, but uh, who knows? They might have been scared to to let us beat Lamone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know, but. We ended up losing that game by five and then came back 18 hours later and played them again. So uh, I think we beat them by 
I think we beat them by two in game three. It was so. a close game, yeah. I saw that game. It was a very close game. Um, and now that we're over with it, what was the actual game plan against them? Like, what did you guys focus on? Was it guarding somebody more than – I mean, yeah, of course it was guarding, you know, Poncho and Tevis more, but what was the specifics that you guys talked about in order to beat them? Um, It was kind of more so – like we play a we play a two three a lot or a three two two three yeah. we play zone a lot. And it was three two, I remember because our, our coach uh told us about it a lot. Yeah. So the way it really came down to was nobody needs to be guarding anybody outside the three point line. Right. Like defensively, your feet should not cross the three point line because nobody is gonna beat us on that team shooting threes. Okay. Um the problem was Poncho driving. So our focus was don't even worry about him shooting threes. If he attacks, stay in front and we'll help over. And but I think the biggest difference was how me and the other big on my team rotated defensively. Like if there was a high post with Tevis, it was just me and him really communicating whether to stay up there or drop back and switch. Um mm. so I guess just better communication between us two and then not having to worry about really anybody shooting threes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it is true. Limon is a very to the basket heavy team. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm not, it's, that is true. And you guys won the third game. Like it was a close game. And you find out you play against Eskazu, the yeah. three time back to back to back champions. Um, what were your expectations for that series? So my expectations, let me tell you. So during the regular season, we lost to them by eight and we lost to them by six. And so in my head, you know, I have a game plan. I'm telling coach, look, we need to let me guard Powell and Jalen on Isaac and then uh, our two other bigs on their other big guys and just really go man. That way, yeah. nobody's helping. Just play a hard man-to-man. Don't let your man touch the ball. Don't let your man score. Because our problem was every time Isaac drove, we'd help over and he would just pass. That's everybody's problem. But it's like I'm telling the team, I'm telling the team, do not help, do not help. Uh, but anyways, before, the, before that game, our practice before, coach tells me that I'm going to be guarding Isaac. Okay. He six eight guarding point guard Isaac. I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> but his purpose behind it was, you know, I could play off of Isaac, be able to contest from a distance, and if he does shoot a three, he shoots a three, which he really doesn't do that often for real. Yeah. Um, his thing is attacking the rim. So, like, if he attacks the rim, he's gonna have to manipulate his shot to get it around me, over me whatever and nobody's supposed to help at all and like that was the purpose of me guarding isaac was because we're gonna let isaac attack and he's either gonna have to score over me or make a hard pass to somebody else and uh but it just didn't work out that way our team every time isaac drove they were still trying to help and even though i'm yelling do not help do not help do not help like they're still just collapse and it was just attention to detail they weren't focused on what we talked about and did what coach said. So yeah. uh, that's the one thing. That's the one thing about playing them. You have to be disciplined. Like you, you can't cheat. You know what I'm saying? Right. You can't, you can't lose focus because that same game plan you guys use was the game plan we use. We, we, we put Mike on Isaac with the same purpose of he's right. going to play down. If he shoots a three, he shoots a three. If he makes it, he makes it, but you know, it's going to be tougher for him to, go up against Mike, at least, you know, try, try to make it a little tougher. Right. Um, and I think that, you know, it does work. You, I mean, losing by, and I'm, I'm telling you this right now, losing by less than 10 to them, it's, it's, it's definitely improvement to what we were used to a couple of years ago, a few years ago. Right. right. Uh, even when he, he played in San Ramon, it was, it was like, people just didn't, I feel like teams didn't really pre prepare properly to guard somebody that is a pass first point guard and he's a great player. He's a great point guard, Absolutely. but he's, 
he's a pass first point guard. You prepare, you know, for the pass first point guard, right? Um, but how and 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 how 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 much do you lose by on those on those two games? I, I don't really remember. Boy, the the first game we lost by, I want to say twenty six. Oh shoot! Okay, and, but it was because uh, the other guy on their team, the shooter, number twelve, Kai. Kai, yeah, he uh, I think he had six threes, and mm. but the difference was they made fifteen more threes than we did. There it is. It's on the number. You multiply fifteen by three. That's forty-five points. Yep. So they got just from threes more than us. We made. I think we made three, mm-hmm. and they made eighteen or 18. something. Like that. Yeah. And. But that's 45 points, and we lost to him by 26. So, you know, if some of my threes had gone in or some of Jalen's threes had gone in, just a few. Yeah. You know, it would have been a different yeah. – Even different if they, even if they just make half of those, uh, like 15 over threes, and it's, it's a different game. Right. But, man, it was it was terrible. Nothing was falling. So, I think I ended up with 17. Me and Jalen both ended up with 17 points that first mm-hmm. game but it was just it was, it was over with you know we yeah. were down like i think we were down 20 at the first quarter yeah that's that second game though you, you guys came out different because i remember watching the stats you were up the first quarter uh i think you won the first quarter from yeah we won the first quarter by like six or eight or something like that yeah and then i mean i, I wanted to go but I think I couldn't make it for something for some reason. But yeah, I I I, I saw the stats. You won the first quarter, and then, um, I guess you know just as es- Kazu turns it up a little bit, maybe. No, coach. You got took, turned it down. Coach took me out. Ah, uh, for missed, how long? Uh, the whole second quarter. Um, uh, eight minutes of the second quarter. That's a I, playoffs. That's a lot. It's, it was punishment. You know, he said that I was forcing shots. So during the during the break between the first and second quarter, he was telling us that we need to be more aggressive and all that stuff. And he told me specifically, he was like, you just need to attack more so we can try to get fouls drawn and stuff. And so, you know, first couple possessions, I'm driving, I scored one. I missed the left-hand floater on one. And then I missed a right-handed floater on another. And coach took me out and I didn't see the floor. The rest of the second quarter, but you know, he took me out. I knew why he took me out. Yeah. Uh, even though he didn't tell me. But, you know, every time some somebody did something stupid, shot a really bad shot, played terrible defense, I just looked over at him and I was like, Really? Like, this is what we're doing. You're gonna punish me and let us lose. Like, yeah. I'm not saying I'm the reason our team ever wins, but you know, I do play a significant part in it. Yeah. And it was just. Did you feel those were four shots? No, I felt like I did what he asked me to do. I attacked the rim. And just because I missed two floaters, you're going to take me out? Yeah. Like, if I'm shooting 63% on the season, like, that's great odds that my shot's going to go in. <laughs> so if I miss two, that means I'm going to make eight of the next – or six of the next eight. Yeah. So, I mean, Hey, I mean, that's that's coach's decision. You can't really, you can't yeah. really, you can't really say anything about it, man. Like that, that's the, that's the one thing about you know, taking it to the chest and live with the results. I guess I did. I took it to the chest at halftime. I pulled him to the side before we went into the locker room, and I asked him like, what, like, why did he send me out? Did he think I took bad shots or whatever the case was? He told me that I was just forcing shots. And I was like, but I'm how am I forcing shots? You know, if I'm taking a shot, then it's got to be a decent look. Yeah. Because I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and try to take shots to miss them. Right. right? That's, that's gonna hurt my averages. Um. But he told me that, and then he wouldn't talk to me anymore. So we went in the locker room, and he started talking and saying all of this stuff in Spanish. Uh, so I got, I really didn't understand it any, but uh. <laughs> Then he said, uh, he said he started yelling at me about something, but he was yelling in Spanish, so I obviously didn't know what he said. But 
translator told me that he was saying, um, if I don't want to be here, then I can leave and all this stuff. And I was like, what did, what did I do? I said, I said, that's the problem. I said, I do want to be here. Yeah. I said, it, but and I said, that's why I'm mad right now. It's like, I do want to be here and I do want to play. If it's like, why am I not playing when I'm one of the best options to help the team come close to winning? Because it was a tied game when he took me out. Mm -hmm. And then we're down 15 at halftime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a turnaround. So yeah. I told him, I was like, they don't play defense. Like, I might have taken a couple bad shots on offense, but at least I'm playing defense. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was my spiel. We had a little argument in front of the whole team. So, um, but he said something about now I have to play him because y'all can't play defense and all that stuff. And so I played the whole second half. And we ended up cutting the game down to six, I think. But then we had to foul in order to stop the clock. And right. they, they made some free throws. So they beat us by 10. Um, so I really feel like if I wouldn't have come out in the second quarter, then there might have been a better shot. But you never know. So you you can't live of um, what ifs. Yep. yep. Right. 100%. 100%. And um, you flew out, what, the, the day after? The very 14 hours later. Yeah. Did you Did you plan it or they just gave you a flight? So the reason why I flew out, I planned on staying after the season ended for about two weeks just to travel more of Costa Rica. But two days before that last game, I got a call from a team in the TBL and they were trying to get me out ASAP because they had five games left in their season and they're trying to make a playoff push to, uh, to get in the playoffs. And so okay. – you know, basketball is my life. So I was like, sure, I'll come out there. And so 14 hours later, I flew there, um, landed at 1230 in the morning and drove three hours to Kentucky and got there about, man, four, 430, something like that at the hotel. Didn't get in my hotel room until 515 because the lady at the front desk had messed something up. Mm -hmm. uh, but took me a few hour nap. Uh, and then we took a, another two hour drive to our game and I played that day and then played the very next day too. And, but the team ended up losing both. So they didn't, they didn't qualify for the playoffs. So, uh, coach told me that I could leave if I wanted to. So I came back to Alabama. Okay. All right. And, uh, what's your, your uh, near future looking like in the next month, two, three months? Do you got any plans about basketball-wise? Yeah, so the next month, month and a half, something like that, I have a couple uh, NBA G League workouts to go to. Okay. Um, here locally in Birmingham, uh, Alabama, we have a team. It's the New Orleans Pelicans G League team. And okay. so I have, my agent has a connection there, and I'm actually supposed to be going there tonight. Um but he asked if I could come a different day because he had something come up. Okay. Um, so hopefully I'll be down there within the next week. And then the Charlotte Swarm, uh, I'm supposed to be up there sometime this summer for a workout. And then the Los Angeles Clippers G League team. So, Okay. When does the season start for them? For them? I think they start like – practices and everything in september okay you got to all right there, there's some time in between but yeah they'll have like workouts and training camp and stuff i'm sure yeah for sure and then july or something yeah all right would you rather stay if if you you make the cut you make it would you rather stay in the u.s for a g league team or go back overseas if you got if you get a opportunity no i would definitely choose the g league over overseas only because just being able to have that on your resume mm -hmm. and NBA G league player. Right. If you show that to any overseas agent, there's, they're going to see that not agent overseas team. They're mm -hmm. going to see NBA and it's just automatically like, it's just better odds to play and you can raise your price. So. Yep. Yep. Do you have a, 
preferred country you like to play in overseas? Um, not necessarily. I mean, I want to – I love how Costa Rica did it where you're there for two and a half, three months. Um, and then you're out because during that two and a half, three months, you're able to travel a little bit, see yeah. bits and pieces of the country, but over in other countries, a lot of other countries, you only play like one game a week, but you have like several practices and all this other stuff. And that's just, you're there for eight months yeah it's just a lot of time in one place mm -hmm. so for me i loved costa rica just because i was able to really experience it in a quick amount of time and be able to leave and have an opportunity to go somewhere else and explore a different place so right. like being somewhere for eight months is not really what i want to do unless i'm in the united states because i love yeah. the united states <laughs> just because food i know people language barriers non-existent right um, it's just easier right yeah hey i mean hopefully something opens up hopefully you know you get the the chance even if it's g league or or uh or overseas i have the nba app so i i i can see g league teams so if you do make it you gotta let me know so i can tune in the games and definitely watch watch uh some of them no absolutely for sure if uh if nothing comes with the g league then uh my agent, he has really big connections in like Greece and Spain and Italy and okay. China. So, okay, he's trying to he's trying to get me somewhere back in Europe in the Euro League. Uh, I think that'd be a, another good opportunity if the G League doesn't work out this season. Hey, that sounds good, man. Um, I like to close out. I've I've asked this to to a couple players before. I like to close out just asking. Um, if you could talk, like, let's say it's you and right in front of you, you put Jason, you know, 16, 17 year old Jason, um, you know, st starting to play basketball at 12. He's a, he's a teenager now. What would you say to him? Um, knowing what you know now, you know, in the basketball wise, life wise, like, what would you say to him? Man, if I was in high school, um, if I was 16, then I would just tell myself to maybe just advise myself more on the importance of like just basketball wise or what? Let's start with basketball wise. Yeah. Right. Basketball wise, I would definitely coach myself on the defensive principles and stuff that I learned in college. Right. Because if I had known half of what I learned in college just defensively, then I would have been an absolute monster in high school. Um, but high school, I was just – I mean, I was just an average player on defense, but offensively I was super good. I could shoot mm -hmm. the ball, was athletic, alley-oops, dunks, transition, whatever. Um, but I think – if I would have added the defensive principles that I learned in college to my high school game, right. I would have easily, easily probably been a five-star recruit. All right. I feel that. I feel that. And, and what about, you know, just in general, after your experiences in growing up, Europe, Latin America, um, what would you tell to, uh, teenager Jason? I would have told him to uh, pay a lot more attention in Spanish. And, <laughs> uh and like actually take it serious enough to learn it and become like almost fluent, you know, cause if I would have, I would, I almost took classes in college just because like I wanted to get back into it, but I never did because, you know, basketball is my focus. and I didn't want to add anything to it where I'd have to add right. more time to something, which means I have to take it away from basketball. And right. so I sacrificed that, but I ultimately I wish I would have, taking more Spanish classes or any other language. I mean, just yeah. having, the, having the ability to communicate with people in foreign countries, not only like makes you look better in their eyes because you're able to partake in their culture more, um, but it can help you with business and yeah, lots of other things. So, I agree. I agree. 
I agree. So yeah, man, um, that's definitely uh helpful. Um I I, I really enjoy the conversation. You know, I've I, I don't think I've ever spoken to somebody that played in Europe yet. Uh, I've talked to people in Asia and stuff like that, but not Europe. So hearing that, you know, taking that experience is, is great. Uh, it was it was definitely fun having you here. I mean, I, I wasn't your teammate, but you know, just the times that we went out and we got to hang out with each other. Right. Uh, it was it was we we had a pending one uh, going to the beach, but I think um, like Jalen got sick or something like that, right? Yeah. 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 But yeah, man, it was it was definitely fun, and hopefully, if if you're able to make it back, you know, take a two three month vacation in Costa Rica, still so play hoop. Uh, oh, absolutely, yes, that's the plan. <laughs> it, it'll be great, man. Um, any last message? Any last anything you, you like to say? Man, just for anybody younger, I guess, like, don't let your current circumstances dictate your future, like, right? you're you're in control of your present and it's your present choices which allow for your future to to be there it has nothing to do with your past and i would say for me like my experience in college like i think i averaged like four and a half five points a game in college and if you looked at my stats for my college you'd be like no way this guy's good enough to go anywhere but uh but i'm given an opportunity in Europe, I go in Europe and I kill it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, dang, where was this guy in college? Right. I'm the same player. I just wasn't given the the freedom and the confidence from my coach to do the things that I did in Europe. And then I go and do the same thing in Costa Rica, and it's like, okay, maybe he is a capable player. And mm-hmm. so, confidence—that's the key word. Yeah, it was never losing my confidence or my faith in myself. It was yeah. my coach might not believe in me, but. I'm not worried about what he believes because, you know, I know my goal and what I need to do and focus on in order to accomplish that. And if I let somebody else's opinion of me get in my head and alter my thinking that I'm never going to be able to accomplish the things that I want to do in life. So I'd say that's, that's my advice. That's word, man. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate everybody that listens or watches on YouTube uh, remember, every Thursday, we're going to have episodes again. Uh, today was Jason. Enjoy the conversation. And yeah, for anybody else, uh, you can hit up the social media. Uh, there's a PayPal link at the bottom somewhere on the screen if you want to support. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you next Thursday. Have a good one. Sure. See you all.